Okay. Uh, in order to edit your store, you're going to go ahead and log in with the username and password that was provided in the link that was sent to you in the email. When you first log in, you get the notification. You'll actually see some of the notifications up here. You don't have to worry about these. We'll take care of these. Um, throughout the process if something needs to be addressed even though it says critical it may not be critical uh, we will update this for you um, so if you look at the first page it's your dashboard uh, it'll actually let you know what your sales are give you a nice graph and everything once you start making some sales and you'll see some other things most viewed customers etc will be down here and then you can see what your search terms are um, the last five etc it's pretty self-explanatory so um, we're gonna go over actually how to edit um, and then uh, remove or update uh, products in the store and then I'll show you how to add. So right now we have uh, categories and we have products. So the categories obviously are self-explanatory and then you have your products. So the products have to be placed into a category in order to function correctly. Okay. So say for instance um, I go ahead and click on uh, category and products and now it actually gives me all my products. Well I want to find a specific product. Real simple. I can just type in say for instance I want to find Woody. I just type in Woody and I hit enter. Okay, so now um, it just brings up my product, shows me you know how much it is, the quantity I have on hand, etc. Okay, well, since you're tracking inventory, um, and if you have a one of item, you have to make sure that the inventory is updated correctly. So now, if you look over here, you have general prices and a bunch of other options on the side here, and we'll go through those individually. Right now, you just have Woody Cooler. Um, there should be more description text here for this. Um, and go ahead and type it in. It's real simple. Or you can use this nice little editor here. If you click on this, it opens it up like a little word thing. And you can select, you know, Woody Cooler. And you can bold it, you know, italicize it, upload images, things like that if you like. Okay. So now once I'm finished, I go ahead and select Submit. And now I, it gives some code in here. So you're going to have to leave that in there. So it'll automatically create the code for you. Then the next time you want to come in here and edit this page, you don't really want to mess around with the code or anything. Just click on the editor again and then it'll pop up and make it look nice for you in the editor, okay? So choose one format or the other. Uh, most people use the WYSIWYG editor. Uh, short description is for shorter items when uh, working with search engine optimization um, and also show on some of the other pages where it shows a short description. Uh, the SKU, everything has to have a SKU number. So <clears throat> some people use numbers, some people use the name like Woody, um, you know, here or whatever they want to call it, okay? Um, they use weight. You actually have to put the weight in here for the actual product. So in this instance, it's 100 pounds. Okay, now the weights right now are set up for shipping based on uh, the, the product price. So some of your items ship for 200, others ship for 250, and then other, over 100 uh, will ship for free. Okay, uh, actually dollar amount price. So you could also set the product to only show on the store for a certain period of time if you like. Uh, the status always has to be selected, okay? So when you're in here, if you ever see police select and the product's not showing on the front, look here for status. You always want to enable it, okay? The URL key is going to be what uh, I look in the top of your website and I see your website domain name slash woody-cooler.html. Yeah, this is definitely needed um, for um, the search engine optimization as well and for easy readability and linkability, etc. Visibility, you have catalog and search. So catalog means it'll be in the main catalog and then search will be in the search bar. Some people like to just put it in the search and not actually have it show on the regular catalog for whatever reason I know not, but some people like that. Country of manufacture, the manufacturer has to be selected all the time. So by default, we just put United States. So now if I'm finished here, uh, if you're done editing everything and you don't, and you just wanna go back to the regular site, you always wanna click save and that'll take you back to all the products. Well, if I wanna to continue to work on this product page, I select save and continue to edit. If you start selecting through here and you don't save, uh, depending on your browser, it may or may not save um, the updates. So you make sure when you're done with whatever page you're working on is select save. So now it'll refresh. It shows you that the product's been saved and now you can go on to the next. So now if you need to change the price, for instance, uh, you can select here and change to $8.99, whatever, okay? Um, price groups, if you had price groups set up, you do not. A special price, this would be MSRP. So say for instance, I put a thousand here. I mean, I'm sorry, I put 500 here. It would actually take this price and cross a line through it and show me 500, okay? And you can also offer the price for a short uh, a period of time. So say you wanted to have a promotion, 
and instead of giving people a coupon code, but you did want to reduce the price of the product, you can show uh, the discounted price for 10 days or whatever, okay, on the website without having to give them a, a code. Um, you can leave a lot of these settings uh, the same. Uh, manufacturer suggested retail price was uh, uh, that MSRP with the slash through. Taxable goods has to be selected. In most cases, this will say please select or none, but you want to have taxable goods since you are um, taxing the product. It is a shipping product. So I didn't make any changes here, so I don't need to select save or save and stay. Meta information, um, this should be uh, set up. Um, it'll automatically pull in the product name and the, for each of these sections if they're not set up by default. Okay, images. Um, if you notice, it says rollover for image preview. Um, the thing does not like to save uh, data in here, so uh, it'll cache it if you roll over it. It's just trying to make the, web, the, the server fast for you. So say, for instance, I need to add a new image to here, or I wanted to change the image that shows up. If you notice here, it says uh, image, label, sort order, base image, small image, thumbnail, exclude, remove. Okay. So if I wanted to remove the Woody, the first one, I click uh, my checkbox here. Okay. Right, and then I would select uh, save and continue to edit, and then it'll take this that particular image out and just show the one. Well, if you look at base image here, uh, the base image is the very uh, first uh, image of everything on the on the, the all the pages. So uh, on the main page of the product page, the small image will show up, and the thumbnail will show up on the category pages and on checkouts and things like that. Um, you can exclude the image. You can upload it and leave it on here and just exclude it so it doesn't show at all. Uh, when you're looking at the product pages, okay? Um, when you have additional images like this, these are the images that show up below the main product. So you have the product here, and you have the three images below, whatever, and then you click on them, and it will change the image for you. So that's what these do automatically. Um, so if you don't have to select, you do have to have one selection for each one. So if you wanted to have one is the base image, one is the small image, and you have another image that you wanted as a thumbnail, you can do that as well, okay? So when you're done, you always do save and continue to edit, okay? Um, if I wanted to upload an image here, I'm going to go ahead and do it. So it says, first you have to browse for an image. And my computer's doing something. So let me find, uh, I'll just find a weird image here. Yeah, let's go. Let me just go in here and I'll pick a shoe, whatever. And I'll just choose this image. I was working on this earlier. So I say open. Okay, so now it shows it down here. I can actually add a bunch of images and throw them down here. And once I'm ready, like say, oh, I, I didn't really want to put that one on there. You could remove them before you upload them. So now I want that. So I'm going to go ahead and upload it. And it's going to show me the progress. Okay, and then it uploads it. Well, I don't know. Where does it go? Okay, now I roll over it. Now I can see that my, my picture's there. Well, it's not assigned anywhere, but it's still going to show up on this on this image. So if I was on the front of your website, I would see now this large uh, image, and I'd show these two below, and I click on that, and it'll replace that two images. Well, I don't want that to stay on there, so I'm going to go ahead and click on there, and I'm going to click on Save and Continue to Edit. Now it removes the image for me. Okay. And there we go. Okay. All right. Uh, recurring profile. Uh, You don't have to worry about that. Design, don't worry about that. It's only if the product page had a different design layout. Um, gift options, um, if you want to actually add a gift message. Like you notice I can't click on it. It says use uh, config settings. Well, if you want to select this, you just go ahead and click here and you can say yes for the message. And then when you save it, it'll actually allow you to put the messaging in there, okay, for a gift message. And let me go ahead and turn that back off. Inventory. Okay, you always want to manage the stock. If you don't want to manage stock, turn it off, and then you don't have to worry about you know any of your inventory. But since you have you know one of items, like I'm looking use config setting quantity, you really only have one or two or three. I'm not really sure. I mean, they're all individual items, so you'd probably want to put one here. Okay, uh, become out of stock, zero maximum allowed for shipping, uh, decimals. Okay, and then this is important as well. So stock availability. So you have to make sure it is in stock. So you have to enable the product, make sure there's a price, manufacturer, all of that skew, and then in stock, okay? So I made a change to this page, so now I just need to select save and continue. I just do this to make it easier. You can click through here depending on your browser, but sometimes it may not save it, so it's just easier to get in the habit of doing that. 
Now I need to assign this to category. Well, I have the woody and it's assigned to all products and it's also in coolers. Well, maybe I wanted to put it into the garden too. So I just select that there and I could put it wherever it needs to go. Well, I don't want it in there, so I don't have to worry about it, okay? Um, so that means that if I click on coolers, I would see woodies. And if I click on all products, I would see woodies. Okay, related products. Now these are the other products that are related to your product. Now you select new here. And this will actually give you, and you put a little cursor in here and you hit enter, and then this will give you all of the products. So now say for instance, I'm selling the woody, but I also want to you know, show the flip-flops. I can select this here, okay? And then I select save and continue to edit. So that'll show me the product that's related to this. So it says, hey, you may also like this product, okay? Upsells, when someone's going through a checkout process and you want to upsell an item, so say for instance, you have the woody cooler, but the Woody Cooler also has uh, a mat that is really cool with it. You can actually upsell that, find the product, and select select it. You don't use that. The same thing with cross-sells. Product reviews. Um, there are no reviews on it right now, so you can say approved. Uh, you'll see a pending. You'll see whatever the, the product reviews are, and there are none. But if there are, you can actually come in here and take a look at the actual product reviews and update them. Product tags are pretty important and you should use them. Um, we didn't put any on here, so you can actually get on here yourself and do it. It'll, by default, it'll use the actual product name, but you're gonna wanna put in tags here, like cooler, um, fun time at the beach, things like that, whatever you want that people would find or do searches for online to find you. Um, customer tagged product, um, let's see here, it's person, custom options, you don't use that. Um, then the custom options, so say for instance that a product has different colors or different sizes, you're gonna to need to add the attributes for it, okay? So if you add a new option, custom options, say for instance I wanna add, uh, so I have color and I wanna add size. So I click on add new option, right? So now I have size, okay? And then I wanna figure out what kind of, uh, is gonna be a radio button, the checkbox, whatever, right? So I'm gonna say drop down just for now, okay? So now when I do that, and then it can require it or not require it, they don't really have to choose it, whatever. Now if I need to set up uh, the options of the size. So now I need small, medium, large, right? So I select title, type in small, okay? And I can actually set a fixed price for it if I want. So if there's a price difference on it, whatever, I can set it up. Just leave it for zero. For now, you can also have its individual SKU because some people have t-shirts and then they have SKUs for the small, medium, and large. So it might be shirt, the same, you know, or cooler in this case. So cooler, uh, small. And then you know it's the small cooler. It's not gonna matter, you'll still have it on the order as small. But some people like to have this so they're doing inventory management. So I need to put also medium on here. Okay, medium, and then zero, uh, and then I have cooler, whatever, medium. Okay, so now we got those two. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, select save and continue to edit. And now it'll actually keep those types on there for me. So now if I go on to your store and I look for um, this product, I have a lot of background programs running, I apologize. There we go. All right, so now if I look at your product on the front of the store, you'll see now then that I have color and I have a size option. Well, I don't need this, so I'm just gonna go ahead and take it out. Um, if you looked on the front of the store and you found this product, you would see these two options, color and size, and it would have a drop down for medium and small and a drop down for blue and red. Well, I don't need those, so I'm just gonna go ahead and take this size back off, save and continue to edit, okay? So now technically I have set up this product correctly. It has everything, okay? Um, the same thing you do if you're gonna add a product. It's real simple. You come in to manage products, okay? And then you select add product over here. And you go through, you're gonna make sure it's a simple product, okay? Select continue, okay? And then you start having your options. You put in your name, your description, and you follow the information. You put your price in, you make sure that it's enabled. You make sure it has a SKU number. You make sure that the URL key is there. Visibility is by default. Remember, you got to put manufacturer in. When you go to save this, and if it doesn't save the page, it'll throw an error and show you what things you need to fill out. So that's what makes it pretty intuitive. Okay, and that's how you edit products, edit, delete them, and also add products to the Magento store.